Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantin equation. Thank you for voting in the YouTube community and confirming that it's time for a Diophantin equation. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications and let's get started. So we're going to be solving this equation for positive integer solutions. Let me write that down. We're looking for positive integers that satisfy this. And obviously, there is going to be a limited number of solutions. Why? We're going to see in a little bit. There's obviously more than one way to solve this problem. And I'm going to be using a technique that's commonly used. And we've talked about this before, but I just don't want to name it because I don't want to spoil the surprise. So now how do we handle this problem and find positive integer solutions? First of all, one of the things that you can think about is can m equal n? If you replace m with n, you're going to notice that there's not going to be any integer solutions. How do you do that? Replace n with m, for example. You get 1 over m plus 1 over m plus 1 over m squared is equal to 1 over 4. And then from here, 1 over m squared. So you can go ahead and make a common denominator. This is going to be 2 over m. And so if you go ahead and multiply that by m here, so you'll get 2m over m squared basically, and then after you do the cross multiplication, you're going to get m squared is equal to 8m plus 4. Now, obviously, from here, you're not going to be getting any, you're not going to be getting any integer solutions. Okay, so m cannot equal n, which means that one of them has to be greater than the other. Okay, let's proceed with the solution now. Now, how do we solve? Well, I want to get rid of all the fractions first. So let's multiply both sides by 4mn. If we do that and distribute, we should be able to get rid of all the fractions and everything should clear out. And when you multiply here, the reason why I use 4 is I want to get rid of the 1 fourth as well. So this becomes 1. And when you distribute this, you're going to notice that the m's are going to cross cancel out and then n is going to cross cancel, so on and so forth. So we should be getting from here 4n plus 4m plus 4 is equal to mn. Okay, now, what strategy or method we're going to use here? Well, what does this look like? We have a product on one side and we have a sum on the other side. So doesn't this call for SFFT? I hope everybody recognizes that when I say SFFT, but I'm going to tell you what it is. It's Simon's favorite factoring trick. But you know, since that's too long, I just call that Simon. Okay, cool. So we're going to use Simon for this problem. Now, how does Simon work? In case you didn't see those videos, you're not aware of the Simon method. Here's how we use it. Well, in to make it more convenient, I would like to start with the product. So I'll start with MN. And then everything else I'm going to subtract from it, except for the constant. So I'm going to leave the constant on that side. And of course, I, I like to write things in alphabetical order as much as possible. So this should equal 4, right? Okay. Now this is pretty much uh, what we're going to do. Uh, and this is good for Simon now because I have the product, I have my difference sum, whatever, and then I have a constant on the other side. So the next step involves making this factorable by grouping. So that's how Simon works. How do you make it factorable by grouping? Because there are three terms, but I want to have four terms. And the fourth one is going to come by adding or subtracting. But in order to find out what it is, I need to start factoring this by grouping. Pretend that this is complete and everything looks good and I can factor it by grouping. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's basically how Simon works in a nutshell. So I'm going to start with the first two terms and look for a common factor. Obviously, that's m. And if I take that out inside, I have n minus 4. And then what follows this is negative 4n. Now notice that Inside the parentheses here, inside the parentheses here, I have n minus 4. So I'd like to get that expression again. But notice that there is a negative 4 in front of n here. So I'm going to put the negative 4 here and keep the n inside the parentheses. So, so far, this is basically our original expression, right? We haven't really added or subtracted anything. But in order to get a common factor, we do need n minus 4 inside the parentheses. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4 here. Now, you might be saying, okay, if you subtract 4 from the left-hand side, you also have to subtract 4 from the right-hand side, which gives you 0. 
but that's not the case because I did not subtract 4. I did subtract 4, but I didn't subtract 4. What is that supposed to mean? Well, if you look at the negative 4 on the outside, the negative 4 inside, that will be multiplied. Actually, I added 16 to both sides, right? Hocus pocus. Okay, so we're supposed to add 16 to both sides as well. And what is that going to give you? When you add 16 to both sides, it's going to give you 4 plus 16, and that is going to be 20, right? There you go. Okay, cool. Now, what am I going to do next? Well, we do have this expression, which is factorable because we have a common factor, n minus 4, and m minus 4. So you can write it as n minus 4 multiplied by m minus 4 is equal to 20. Okay, we're almost there. Now, what are we going to do next? Well, we do have two positive integers, m and n. We subtract 4 from each one, multiply together, we get 20. So we should be looking at factors of 20. How can you factor 20 into two factors such that m and n are always positive? What is that supposed to mean? For example, if m is equal to 2, is that a possibility? If m is equal to 2, for example, you're going to be getting a negative 2 from here, which means the other factor needs to be negative 10. And negative 10 means the n needs to be negative 6, which is not going to work. So m cannot be 2, obviously, because it makes n negative. So we're basically going to be looking for positive, positive ways to factor 20. Why don't we go about that? So let's see how that goes. And then we'll check all the cases. Okay? Awesome. Now, first case. Can I have a 20 and a 1 here? So here's what you need to realize. When I say n minus 4 equals 20, n is going to be 24. So basically, whatever your factors are, you're going to add 4 to each one, and it should give you the number you're looking for. For example, in this case, n would be 24, and m would be 5. Is that a valid solution? Absolutely. Why? Because they're both positive. Okay, cool. So 20 and 1 work. Why don't we try something else, like 10 and 2? And from symmetry, obviously, 10 and 2 and 2 and 10 is going to give you the same thing, but they'll, they'll just switch around. So I can basically find these primitive ones and then just flip them, right? I don't really need to go through all the cases. Okay, so 10 and 2 is going to give me n equals 14 and m equals 6. Good, that also works. And then what else do I have? Well, maybe I could use 5 and 4, right? Possibly. And that gives me n equals 9 and m equals 8. Cool. Now, if I say 4, 5, it's just going to switch around. 2, 10, 1, 2, any. So these are all the positive cases. Is there any way I can get something like negative 4 and negative 5, negative 1 and negative 20? Notice that n minus n is a positive integer. So let's just take n. n is greater than 0, so n minus 4 needs to be greater than negative 4. So basically, this is true for both of them. So... So you can't have anything less than or equal to negative 4 uh, in these factors. So if I use negative 1, then negative 20 is going to mess it up. Negative 20, negative 10 is not going to work. Negative 4 and negative 5 is not even going to work. So basically, none of the negative cases work here. Uh, can I get any zeros? Obviously not, because 0 is not going to uh, work. So basically, that's what I have. So our... Solution set is then, uh, if, if I write it as an ordered pair like mn, if I were to write the solutions as ordered pairs, then I should be getting 5, 24, and then I would get 6, 14, then I would have 8, 9, and then I'll just flip these around 24, 5, 14, 6, and 9, 8. And those are going to be all my positive solutions and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video please comment like and subscribe and i'll see you tomorrow at the same time with another video until then be safe take care bye bye